Hello, everyone. I am here with Mike Simmons, who's been featured on the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Podcast not once, but twice, episode 50 and episode 389. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Mike, what's going on? Not too much, man. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good overall. Jiu-Jitsu has me physically exhausted most of the time. But <laughs> Did you just start that? Is that something you've been doing for a long time? No, or are you just I'm pretty new it? at it. It's maybe been three and a half months that I've been going to class, but I only get to go like twice a week, and that's assuming I don't miss a class so often I go once a week. Gotcha. Yeah, it's funny you say that. Like, I actually, Taekwondo was my thing for about 20 years I did it. Now, I'm on the other end of that. I've, I've since stopped practicing, but uh, I did it from like 14 to like, 30 something 30 what is early it 30s. about taekwondo that is so appealing for little kids um you get to kick there's kicking involved I there's think a lot that's of probably it. <laughs> the big draw there's a lot of kicking involved i know about getting your butt kicked i've had my butt kicked i've paid to get my butt ki- you're paying basically to have someone kick your butt right i mean that's that's the crazy thing is we're paying for this yeah but i'll bet you that there's a strong connection with the massively successful company you built now and the butt kicking you went through when you were younger totally. I've just seen like successful people when they are asked, because if you're going to be successful, you're going to have to do certain things. There's no way around it. Okay. And if that is the hardest thing you've ever done in life, what your business is asking you to do, it's yeah. very yeah. difficult for you. Right. Uh, it's jarring. It, yes. And if you're like, Oh, I've done harder things than this. It feels easy. I, I was thinking about this when I would hire like a new agent and say, Hey, you have to call five people a day and talk about real estate. And they act like I'm ripping teeth out of their mouth. Just what am I going to say? Yeah. Five different calls. And I'm like, I wonder if I told the Navy SEAL, like, the only thing I'm asking you to do is make five phone calls and say this. They're like, so no, there's no sharks attacking me while I'm making these calls. And I'm not going to be electrified. Waterboarded while I make the call. They would look at it like, well, I could do that while I'm doing push ups. Let's just make it fun. And they would be successful. So, one of the things I tell people, especially when they're young, is like, just do hard stuff. If you do hard stuff when you get older, life doesn't feel that hard. If you avoid hard things your whole life, well, when you get older, you realize, oh, life is really hard. It just stays that way all the time. Yeah, man. When I was 15, I got kicked in the face by a 28 year old man. And and now for the rest of my life, I could say, well, at least I wasn't kicked in the face. <laughs> you know, I had to make five calls, but at least I didn't get kicked yeah. in the face. I'm curious to hear about your business. Tell us a little bit about, I know you're doing wholesaling, but t- like, give me a macro understanding of what your business looks like right now. So macro, uh, we are doing wholesaling. We're mostly in Michigan. I, I'm pretty much in my own hometown. There's a, you know, 3 million population of 3 million in my target market. So no real reason to go out of there. Uh, we do strategics flips here and there, but my, you know, I tell people all the time, I really believe that your your company is built to do something great. It can do other things, but you're, you're, you're going to be great at doing one or two things. And anything else you try to do, you're not going to be great at it. So my company is built to wholesale. And so we do flips because I flipped houses for six years on my own before I built a team. So we can flip. But the minute we flip a house, I have to get involved. And then now I'm involved, right? So we do mostly wholesaling. Every once in a while, we'll do a flip if it just makes nothing but sense. But pretty much wholesaling, and we have a we have a pretty small team. We ballooned up a couple of years ago to about fifteen people. It was ridiculous. We had way too many people on our team. Now we have about five people, and everyone has a real targeted thing that they do. And we're lean, but we're fast. We're nimble, and we get a lot of we get a lot done. We've we've gone down in volume a little bit since COVID hit. That had some unique issues that got introduced into our business and a lot of people's business. But what we what happened with us, and it was a really a good thing for us. A lot of companies had hardships during COVID. I get that. People had hardships totally. But for my business, it was it ended up being a good thing because we we scaled back our team, which was bloated and and probably too much, too much redundancy. But we did we're doing less volume of deals, but we're making more profit per deal, which is awesome, right? It's like less work for more money. Would you mind sharing, how are you getting these deals under contract that you're then wholesaling to others? Yeah, so it's a great question. Um, That was a huge change in our business too, because prior to COVID, I would say 70 to 75% of our deals were direct mail. There was a real push in my business to, to get that direct mail to continually scale it up so that we could grow. When COVID hit, in Michigan at least, there was like, it sounds silly now, but there was a real fear of touching anything that somebody else had touched right in the beginning. Right. And so our mail pieces stopped being effective. Like, I mean, stopped like a train hitting a wall, just stopped. 
And so we stopped doing the direct mail for quite some time. And what picked up for us, what kind of took up that slack was PPC, right? Google AdWords, because people were sitting at home. They weren't at work for you know, a lot of people. And they were typing, how do I sell my house fast, right? So Google sort of flip-flopped. We were doing about probably 15 to 20% was, was Google AdWords. And the rest of it was direct mail. It totally switched. And the vast majority of our deals became... PPC. Now, PPC is still working for us really, really well, but we've supplemented that with cold calling and we've started doing some ads on the radio, which is new for us. So what would you say is the thing that you do best in the business? The thing that I do best that I'm honestly the most passionate about, I mean, listen, in, if you're talking in the business, like the, some of the functions of the business, I'm great at dispositions. I'm really, really good at taking contracts, finding that a uh, house flipper or landlord mm -hmm. or whoever the end buyer is going to be and getting that thing sold for the most money possible. And I think the reason that I'm good at that is it's a sales function and I don't consider myself a great salesperson. However, the front side of wholesaling is going into the home, talking to the homeowner, and that's a much more traditional sales role. The disposition side or the side on the back end when you're selling that contract, it's much more B2B and it's a lot more of a negotiation than it is empathy and and trying to discover pain points like you're not doing that with your buyers so much you're just negotiating the price of a house it's way more matter of fact it's way more cut and dry and i i just really i really appreciate that now as far as my business from like a, a macro sense what i have learned to to really love and i think i've gotten really good at is teaching teaching and 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 building a culture inside of my company that makes people want to be there and makes them excited about what we do. And that is not something that we are typically prepared for as entrepreneurs. When we're out there hustling and doing everything, we're not really prepared for the leadership role. We're prepared to get deals under contract. We're prepared to deal with contractors. We're prepared to deal to sell the houses. But when someone says, assemble this team and make them love, love working with you, that nothing we've done to that point in real estate, at least has prepared us for that. And so I've learned to love that role. I've been become very big reader and, and trying to get better at that role of leadership. Cause ultimately that's how my company succeeds. It's not me anymore. It's the people I've brought in. And I believe you wrote a book on that topic, right? I did. Thank you for mentioning it. It's right over my shoulder, boom, level jumping. Um, it, it's really, you know, level jumping is not really like what software do I use? What CRM do I use? It's not really about that. And I, I had this discussion actually with Brandon when he was on my podcast. It's way more about what are the things that really got me from doing like a couple of deals a month to doing 10 or 15 deals a month? What really got me there? And it's not what everyone always expects. There is a, there is an aspect of culture and how do we, you know, how do we maintain that culture? There's people like there's metrics that you have to you have to measure if you want to go from just doing a couple of deals here and there and kind of having that lemonade stand, you know, that proverbial lemonade stand at the end of your driveway to go from that to an actual business. You have to track things. You have to know where your money is. And so it covers a lot of that stuff. Like it doesn't tell you how to start a business, but it tells you how to grow one into a mm -hmm. business that doesn't require you to work and do every single thing in the business. Is there anything you can share from your perspective of building a business of what you've done to try to maintain a culture that makes people want to work hard when they come into work? Absolutely. There's a couple, there's some practical stuff, some real tactical, and then some little softer side stuff from a, from a real practical standpoint. What we learned in our business is if you want, you know, at the beginning we were paying people like salaries and things, and then we would get a particularly large deal closed and me and my partner are like high-fiving. We're psyched, right? But everyone else is like, oh, that's cool. But there, nothing changed for them. It, it, closing a big deal, closing a small deal didn't, didn't do anything different for them. And so pretty early on, we realized everybody in our business needs to have some tie to the net profits of our company so that when a particularly large deal closes, it's different for them too. They have a reason to high five. So that's very practical. Tie people to the net and watch them care way more about getting deals done. The other thing is the way I'm designed and the way that I was brought up, I was raised by a Marine. I talk about it a lot. I wasn't designed to expect nor need a lot of personal interaction to get the job done. Yeah. And so when I started bringing people onto my team, I was just giving them their marching orders, saying, go get it done, 
we'll reconvene and we'll, we'll evaluate how you did. Right. And it's like, it's so impersonal. It's so cold. And they just start feeling like you don't care about them. You care about the, the money that they're making or yeah. that you care about the, the deal more than them. Totally. Yeah. You hear soldiers say <laughs> that all so, the time. They, they don't care about me. They just care about the mission. hundred percent, hundred percent. And that's really how I was treating it. And so when I learned to slow down a little bit, just because I don't necessarily need a good morning, how was your weekend kind of a conversation, most normal humans do. <laughs> they want to know that you give a crap, right? So just slowing down and trying to learn about my team and what, what makes them tick, because believe it or not, it's a very antiquated notion to think that money is all that motivates people. In fact, I, I would probably guess that people on my team could go somewhere and make more money than maybe what they're making with me. But what they get with me is a lot of the other stuff that companies aren't willing to give. And that's a lot of flexibility. Uh, we let, we don't police people on their time. We're all remote. I don't check in. What did you do today? Fill out this thing, right? You get the job done. We're happy with you. If you have a life situation, family comes first, right? We always make sure that they understand that we view family above the dollar. And so things like that, man, with just having regular meetings, going out to lunch with people that work for you and not even bringing up work, just talk about their family, talk about them, talk about what's exciting to them. Because when you know what motivates people, you know how to motivate them. When you know what's important to them, you know what, and it sounds a little bit manipulative. It's not, you know what buttons to push, right? For example, um, I had an employee one time who had a, a family member or a parent that lived with them and they needed therapy in the middle of the day. Every day they go to mm -hmm. therapy with their, with their parent, but somebody else had to keep, they had to keep shuffling it around the family because no one could really do it. And we said, listen, if you need to go do that, you go do that every single day and we'll give you that time off. And this was a person who answered phones for me. We let her be off between two and four every day. Two and four is when we get the majority of our mm -hmm. calls from our marketing. But we we worked around it and let her be gone from two to four to take her mom to therapy. Like, are you kidding me? You've just built somebody who's who's going to do anything for you. They'll, they'll do anything because you cared enough to make an exception for them when they needed it. All right. Well, Mike Simmons, wholesaler extraordinaire, team building expert. Tell people again about the name of your book so they can go buy it. It is called Level Jumping uh, and you can get it on uh, Amazon or on my website, Mike Simmons. Go pick out Level Jumping. And Mike, thank you for your time. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Have fun.